All right, so I'm in my kitchen, <clears throat> and uh, there's a little fish there. And there's a chicken that we butchered that's in a in a bag. I don't know who plucked that one, but they didn't do a very good job. Um, but you know, every day you guys cook, right? You know that this used to be a nice little fish swimming around that loved its life, and uh, then somebody killed it for you and put it in a package <clears throat> and so it just looks all neat and clean there but you know that this was a living animal just as this chicken was um, just as the hamburger you eat was a nice cow that loved its life okay and we oh come here you little hummer we take these little sweet things like this <clears throat> and uh, grow them up and kill them and eat them and then you pick you get it in a nice little package and uh, <clears throat> you know you make your dinner and you don't see nothing wrong with that okay well right here I have a horse's hoof that I'm going to dissect now I'm gonna tell you right now that this is no different now this has been cleaned it's in here in my my kitchen <clears throat> it's been scrubbed down with soap very good it's no different than if I had an oxtail here, or a chunk of hamburger, or a chicken I was cutting up, or a piece of fish. Do you understand that? You know, it's, it's, oh, except for you, you pooped on my, my leg there, you little hummer. So anyway, um, my little friend Leah, she's hatching these little chicks I got in a box here in the house. You've got to go. And we got to clean off the, uh. Yeah, poo poo off the leg here. It was clean, let's put it that way. I'll have to clean it again. Cranks chicken. Take this dirty rag and clean it off. Okay, but anyway, of course, I wouldn't let my little chicken poop on my food, of course. But the point is that dissecting one of these is no different than chopping up your steak or uh, your fish. Or your chicken okay and as I said this has been washed I'm in my kitchen I'm gonna cut it up what the heck um, it's clean I cloroxed it and scrubbed it with the brush and everything else and when I'm done I'll clorox this off so uh, I'd like to invite you all over for but anyway it's just a piece of meat folks that's all it is only the thing is it's just a foot off of a horse okay so <clears throat> anyway, this is off Toby, um, who got colic and had to be put down, had a twisted gut. Very sad, sad deal, but, uh, you know, I was thankful that, that the owner, Terry, allowed me to take his feet so that we can all learn something from them. Because what we are doing, okay, what I want to do, I've already started, um, I'm gonna skin skin the hide off here now I butchered deer and cattle and sheep and goats and uh, so I know how to skin things so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right now I'm in the process of just skinning the hide off of this now all the beef you get those cattle have to hang up and they have to skin the hide off of them just like this before they get to the the nice meat you want on the inside <clears throat> now what I'm doing right now is I'm going to skin all the hide off this and I'm going to take the hoof capsule off and what I want you to see is the inner foot that you are trying to fit this capsule to and anything that is bigger than about uh, any bigger than a half an inch anywhere on that hoof capsule is too much hoof capsule somewhere some way somehow and that's what you're going to see when you see the beauty of the inner foot and the horse's inner foot is just like your foot except instead of being covered with skin it's covered with its own uh, continually growing shoe okay so and that's uh, uh, my inspiration is the whole foot I mean, yeah, we get to know different parts like the lateral cartilages and the bulbs and the digital cushion and the frog and the coffin bone and the lamina that holds the wall. The lamina on the inner wall of here 
that hold uh, and the lamina on the inner foot that hold together like something that that's dovetailed together so that uh, it stays together and um, the wall grows from here and grows down and then you trim it off down here at the bottom so um, yes we need to know all those parts and how they work but our inspiration should really be to get a picture in our minds of the internal foot the foot that is behind this foot here now I trimmed this horse uh, I think three times and uh, he's the horse on uh, one of my one of the videos I'm not sure which number it is I all have to get that where uh, he's got he had really crooked front legs he's a little gilding and uh, he lived with two little mares, an Arab mare and a black and white paint mare. I trimmed them also on the videos. And um, he had very crooked legs, which I showed how when you picked up his legs, uh, like the right, if I picked up the left front, it would point to the to the right rear. That's how crooked his legs were. And, and he towed out real bad. So, um, so the, you know, I, I would rather definitely have this horse be alive and have this foot sitting here because I really liked this horse and it was a very sad deal. A veterinarian injected him with ivermectin. Um, ivermectin should not be injected in horses. It causes an overkill of strong oils to where then uh, you wind up getting an aneurysm in the intestine. Um, and this horse uh, was so uh, jammed up inside. And see, this horse got warm pretty regular, but this injection of ivermectin um, so twisted his guts up with uh, strong oils and things that died in there too quickly that um, he was actually uh, aspirating his food up and then back down into his lungs. So... Um, anyway, he had he had to put, be put down. It's very very sad. He's only eight years old. So, folks, you need to read up on some some vet comes along ever wanting to give your horse an injection of warm medicine. You tell him to go take a freaking hike. Okay. All right. So I'm going to work on this and I'm going to skin this and I'm going to take off the the hoof capsule so that you can see the inner foot. Okay, now just so you know, if you get happen to get a horse hoof and you want to do a dissection, I'll show you how I started this. Okay, um, if you get a fairly fresh one, just a minute here, get some of the blood off there. Now again, this is no different. I've cut up plenty of deer right here. Okay, that still had hair on them, everything else. Okay, um, this is no different than cutting up a chicken, folks. Okay, um, so you gals need to quit being squeamish over this stuff because you will never truly understand your horse's hoof if you don't know the anatomy of that foot and you've got to be able to look at it. You know, you just got to put it in your mind. It's no different than cutting up a chicken. Okay, I'm offending little chicky over there. Okay, uh, now what I started was... <clears throat> I made an incision here and I just cut the skin here and then I start peeling it back and the way you skin an animal is it's there's connective tissue in between here and and this right here and so you just start peeling it back like this and you just you just get this connective tissue you see this right here watch see that see how that comes off that's how they skin an animal Okay, now it's a little more connected right here. See, you can see where the connective tissue is in right there. See how I cut that and it just takes the hide right off there? See right here? Going in between. Wow, this is just fascinating. Look at the, the ligaments and the tendons in here. It's just fascinating the way this horse's leg is put together. And, you know, this, it couldn't be any better than to get, this horse just died yesterday about 6 o'clock, okay, and it's about 2 or 3 o'clock here today, and it, this has been kept cold, it was washed, and so basically it's like a, a fresh piece of meat, you know, 
So there's nothing dirty. I don't need, there's nothing rotten about it. I don't need uh, gloves, okay? No more than I, I need gloves if I'm cutting up chicken in my kitchen. Okay, so. Right there, you see that tendon? Okay, so what I'm going to do to start out here is I'm just going to skin the hide off of this. Now, I, I come down here, I started peeling away, and I cut real close here to the top of the hoof to get the hairline off right here. See, and I'll come back around here, and I'll just skin this whole thing off. See, you pick that up, and you kind of want to stretch it a little bit, and then you just kind of go in between the hide right there. See that? See this part here. Now, remember, this is where that, whatever you call that, I don't know what they call those. Anybody know what they call those little things? Under there. So that thing is going to be interesting to go around when I get to it. Okay, so you're getting an idea of what I'm doing here. See, I'll go over here, watch this. See the connective tissue right there? See how that just comes right off of there? Hey, the way the economy is, you never know if you're going to have to go out and kill a deer, folks, and you might have to skin it. So this is the way you skin any animal. You just pull the hide apart, like so, and then you get in between the hide and the uh, bone, body part, meat, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So see, I'm going to come right up here. I want to get this right up into there. Because I want to take this off right at the, the hairline. I need to get some better glasses. I can't see diddly squad. Okay, so I'm going to work on, on skinning this out of here, and then I'll be back. Okay, see there? I'm just coming in there, right in between, getting that connective tissue. And you got to have a real sharp knife. This is a fillet knife. Not really a skinning knife, but you got to have a very, very sharp knife. I need to take my glass off. I broke my regular glasses so I can't see. Now I am coming right up here under that hairline right there. I don't want to put into the lateral cartilages because we want to be able to see all this once we get all this done. Now, I'm telling you, if you get a chance to get a horse's feet pretty fresh dead, you learn a lot by doing this. Starting to see the lateral cartilage right here. Fascinating. Fascinating. I'll tell you, the body is fascinating. Oh, now see, there's some connective tissue. I'll just come up in there and stretch the skin. Go in between that. This is kind of... 
sometimes it's hard to tell right there you just kind of got to cut into it and see what that is there we go okay there Okay, see, I'm, I've already got in between there. See how the hide is coming off of there. Ah. Oh, telephone. Hold on. Okay, um, so far this is what I've got. Um, here's the hide. Again, there's your connective tissue. I came up under all this back here where it was connected right here. here see, under here, here's your digital cushion. Here's your lateral cartilage right here and here. And all this from here to here is all digital cushion that goes under the frog there and is shaped like that. Okay, so we're going to finish taking the hide off here again. Remember to dehide something. You just keep pulling on the hide and slicing the connective tissue here. Almost got her off. I also washed it off because there's a little bit of blood that come out of there. I know some of you folks are still kind of squeamish. Doesn't bother you to cut up a steak and see a little bit of blood, but for some reason, because this is a horse's leg, you know, you get a little, a little sissified, folks. Okay, sorry. See, I'm getting the very end of the hide off here. And there we go. There's the hide that ran around the horse's leg. Got a little bit of a digital cushion right there. You see how closely that digital cushion is connected right in here. See there? The hide is connected to the digital cushion and that fatty stuff there that's actually digital cushion right there when you're testing a digital cushion and you go like this okay well this hide is connected right there and I accidentally I didn't want to get the digital cushion but I did pull off some of the digital cushion there see it's very rubbery and fatty so this is the the horse is like. See there. Pretty fascinating, huh? Right there you go. Okay, here is the foot that's been skinned down to the hairline. Um, let's go up here and look a bit. <clears throat> okay, now the interesting thing that I found here when, let's see, when I skinned the foot was seeing the lateral cartilages right here. Okay, you look on your horse's foot and you'll see a bulge right here, unless of course your wall has so jammed up and compressed these and covered them, which happens a lot. Okay, these have to be, you know, free to kind of move like that. That's your lateral cartilage. Okay, let's go over here. See that? It's cartilage. There, you can really see it. This is a nice fresh foot. It's not rotten, so you can see how everything is. Let's turn this around here. Let's turn this around. Okay, so again, <clears throat> really want you to get a good idea of these lateral cartilages. There they are. They're not very thick, but they're very rigid. See? Right there, I push on that. I'm pushing on the digital cushion right there. You can see the digital cushion in the center move. And again, they're not attached 
to anything right here. They're kind of free moving, so you don't want your hoof wall to jam clear up into here and encase these to where they can't move. Okay, um, so my foot is about a week old now, so I am wearing gloves because it's getting a little, it's not rotten yet or anything like that, but it is getting a little older. I prefer to wear gloves. It's fresh. There's nothing there that's going to hurt you. Now, um, something that has really been on my mind for a while is the lateral cartilage here. Now this cartilage is only about that thick, okay, and it just covers, it's shaped like the hoof right here, and it goes down right into here, and it connects the coffin bone. And it is filled in here with the digital cushion, and um, they call the digital cushion fibro fatty cartilage, okay, well, when you feel in here, you can definitely tell why they call it fibro fatty because it's fatty, but you can definitely feel fibers of uh, cartilage in it when you palpate it like this. Now, it fills up the inside of the curve of this cartilage piece right here. And you know, it, it helps to understand, the more you understand about why you need to trim a certain way, why the, the hoof has to be a certain form, um, the more likely you're to do it, the more likely you're to see the right image in your head. Now, we do not want this wall getting jammed up and this hairline coming up like this and encasing these lateral cartilages, and unfortunately, many, many domestic horses have that issue. And uh, <clears throat> so, part of the corrective trimming that, that I teach and, and that I'm working on, that I'm researching, trying to, you know, figure out ways to correct the hoof, is how to get, once the hoof wall has jammed up and added into the wall here, how to get that to let itself back down like so. So you don't want this wall really jamming up and, and encasing or lifting the internal foot up and lifting all this, all the bulbs and the cartilage out of commission. Now, because there's a purpose for this part of the foot, this is a major part of the foot and, and it has a ma major mechanical influence on the movement of the horse. And I realized that that was after I had taken some videos and I was looking at the back of this foot and the way it's designed. Now, right now we just have a foot that's stationary, but if you will look at um, slow motion pictures of horses at a dead run, and I, I, I can't even do it with this foot. That's how much pressure is exerted on the foot when it happens. But when the horse walks, you know, this pushes down, like so, okay? Um, the stronger the gait, the faster, the more the pastern here descends down like this, okay? At a dead run, okay, I can't even push this down that much, but this right here, okay, the whole pastern will descend and practically touch the ground. See, I can't even push it down as much. Let me pull that up. I can't even push it down as much as it actually descends. It descends even more than that. See there? And of course this tendon is tighter up in the leg, so don't think that your tendon is like that. Because the tendon is hooked up here and it's pulled taut and tight. So this descends way down at a dead run this will almost be clear to the ground when that foot hits the ground <clears throat> so that helps us understand why this is like this why it's fibro fatty why these lateral cartilages are move like this why they aren't look how they're not connected 
right here. This is all open. They're not connected to anything right in here. Okay? And that is so that this pastern can descend and they can widen out. See there? See how they move? Let's get that over there. This whole thing here, well, thing. Let's see, you got P1, P2, P3. Okay, this whole unit of the pastern can descend down between here. Okay, and these move. And this bone right here, this joint, okay, slides in between here very smoothly. There's room for it, see? For it to descend in there. Now, I want you to see this. See how there's room for that to de bone to descend, that joint to descend downwards and to push the lateral cartilage out, okay? Okay, so if the hoof wall is up here encasing this, there's no room for this to descend down in here. See that? See how easily you just push that over a little bit? And right away, this joint right here is pushing on that right there. Okay, so imagine how bad that is <clears throat> when the hoof wall <clears throat> has grown and jammed clear up into here. Encasing the lateral cartilage. Okay. And uh, then what? See where it's supposed to have some space right here. Right there. And that can descend. Then what's happening? This is encased. And that joint right there is pushing on those. And it has nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. It can't descend down because it's encased with hoof capsule right here. Okay, now, farriers and most people, whenever they're trimming a hoof or looking at a hoof, what do they look at? They look at the hoof only. Okay, this is as big a part of the foot as anything that you have down here. Okay, and, we got, and so what you find is when you start trimming, correctively trimming these horses, and you start getting this excess wall that's been added out right here, you'll start to see these lateral cartilages and these bulbs just come alive with the movement of the horse and move. <clears throat> Let's see here. See how that has to go down between there? There's an open spot for it to go down between there. There. See there? It's got to be open. Again, if there's too much hoof wall up here and grown, what's that do? You think maybe that wears on this bone right here? This joint? So you got P1, the coffin bone there, you got P2 here. You got P3 right here. Oh, well, wait a minute. Okay, P1, coffin bone in the foot. This is P2 right here. And right here is a joint. P3, this joint right here, the back of it, descends in between the lateral cartilages. And the thing is, this fibro fatty cartilage plus all the tendons when they're connected it's like um, major suspension going on here bouncing taunt suspension and so when this pastern descends down in between the lateral cartilages and into the dish and digital cushion there's a natural bounding bouncy action because this cannot truly be crushed you know, just the way it is, it's like, you talk about memory foam mattress, well, this has it way above that, okay? No matter where you push it, it just bounces right back. It's like, almost like a big uh, mass of rubber in there. 
So again, I just think that's fascinating. Again, and uh, uh, you know how those how that foot works back there. See, and how those lateral cartilages move. Let's get a little close up here. Now, these heels do not expand as much as people think. Okay? They barely, when a horse sets out, they barely move out. And the, one of the reasons they don't move out a lot is because as this is descending here, it's pushing this out up here, which is technically, uh, because of the shape of the hoof, if you push this out here, up here, it's going to want to make this kind of suck in under here. So, um, you know, they talk about heel expansion. Well, where you need the expansion is up here. Where you need the freedom is up here. See? For that to, to widen out, and, and the heels just barely, if you watch any of the videos on YouTube or anything, they just barely move. I mean barely. So, you know, when you're thinking of a foot expanding, it don't expand much. But where it does really move and expand is up in here, you know, when that's pushed down. Let's take a look at that. See how much those bulbs move? That's the most expanding part of the foot right there. So those lateral cartilages have to be free to move. Okay. See how open that is in there? That's so that can go down into there like that and the lateral cartilages can, can expand. Okay. So from this dissection, I've learned more about the lateral cartilages than I ever knew before. <laughs> it's just fascinating. You know, so anyway, and we've been noticing this in our hoof group and people trimming how in getting the walls down here, and you can't just do it by just cutting heels low. It don't work that way. This wall here can grow and jam up in like that, okay? But the sole will remain looking just like that, pretty much. So you can't just take it off the sole or you'll be cutting right into the foot. Because it's a wall that has been added from here up, pushing, 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 encasing, jamming. Look at that. See, if I had wall up here, growing up right here, even here, look at that. I want you to see that. Just too much wall, a little excess wall right here. It's going to push that lateral cartilage right there. I think that would be make a horse very sore, this pushing up into this joint right here. See there? I can feel it too. Where right here, it just moves freely. Try and get, get it so you can see that. See if I push right here, that joint right here between P2 and P3 isn't free to descend right there. Right there, it's smooth and it works perfect. That's why, see it's not connected from here to here to anything. And it's made that way so this can descend down between it, right there. So again, this is a major part of your foot right here. From here to here. Even just a little jamming jams this joint right here. And I can see why a horse wouldn't want to, and so wouldn't want to walk, would be sore. You know, might not be down in here.
Why be in here? So, uh, you get a little excess wall up here, start squeezing right here. I can even feel it right there. See, if there's no wall right here that's jammed up, holding this tight, then it just moves freely. I can feel this moving in here. A little bit of wall gets up there. I know I'm reiterating myself and being very redundant, but but it's because it's like a new discovery, kind of new, but kind of not. I've known that these bulbs and this lateral cartilage is vital, but I didn't realize how much until I did this dissection. So I can palpate this and feel this right here. Okay, now I can feel these move out to receive this joint area, P1 and P2, in the pastern. And again, as I said, you know, a horse running, I can't push this down as much as the, the foot actually truly descends down like that. Okay, and it's just for a split second up. But just doing this, I can feel these lateral cartilages widening and narrowing as that joint descends down in there. Now if I just press just a little, which a, a grown up hoof wall right here, okay, that just that much right there and just a little bit of pressure from my thumb, I can feel how it restricts that joint. If I press on both sides, I can see how that could really make a horse sore right there. Instead of descending between, between them like it's supposed to, it's rubbing right here. And so I believe this is why this turns into side bone, which is it makes the, um, turns into bone, side bone. From the pressure on it and the constant wear like that, to where when these are free, it's got the freedom to move unrestricted and not receive a lot of pounding. Okay, yep, that's just awesome. So again, take a look at the back of that foot. Now you know why it's made this way. So that this part of the foot, the pastern P1 and P2, can descend down between it and it will widen and just slides up and down very easily. And you can feel the weight. You can feel the weight of the foot. I guarantee you the weight is not on the toe. When I push down like this, Okay, I can feel through my hands where this horse is carrying its weight. Okay, and let me let me just I'd say the weight centers right in here. Right in here. You know, it's not really on the heels and it's not on the toe, it's centered right in here the weight, dispersing all the weight out. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Now, they say, well, that's junk science, whatever. All I know is I can feel where the weight is in that foot. You know, and it is primarily directed from here back. Which makes sense, because from here back is where your digital cushion is and your cartilage. It's very interesting. See, if I put my hand right on the top. I can feel where that foot is weighted. Huh, that's interesting. All right. Yeah, and I didn't even have to have a million fancy contraptions, <laughs> okay? Just the common sense of figuring, well, let's see, all this digital cushion, and this cartilage, and this frog, okay? I would imagine the foot is weighted right in here, 
And since this is a dome, it's dispersed. Okay. Uh, we see all the layers of the foot here. Here, well, here's your outer, harder pigmented wall. Now the lines you see going through there are horn tubules. And they're supposed to grow at a specific angle down. They're attached to the laminal leaves right here of the internal foot. Now this is cartilage right here. This is not coffin bone. Okay, your coffin bone's a little further up. It's about here. This is the center of the foot. See how I've marked it. See how it goes right here to this point on the lateral cartilage. Right here. That's the widest part. I keep saying center. I mean to say widest part of the foot. Right here. If we were to look up at the hairline, it would be right here where the widest point of the foot is. And so that's why we, at about a 55 degree angle, draw a line right here see that and see where it winds up on the central sulcus right here okay so um, here's your buttress right here the heel buttress is this triangular piece of hoof wall here where the bar comes up and joins in with the wall this heavy piece of triangular horn is called the heel buttress. Okay, now, this is what it looks like when the wall is off. This is half of it right here. See there? This is the buttress and it goes up here and it supports the bulb right here. Okay, so right in here is your heel buttress. Okay, this yellow part of the wall here, this is the white line. And then you see the other layers of the wall right here. Okay, we don't really have any soil showing. Maybe not even right there, actually. This is still wall right here that we're looking at. Um, there you can see how that wall is supposed to fit that internal foot. Now this side was very good. It snugly fit the internal foot all the way down to the ground and through the sole. If you have a flare, it might not fit that. There might be a gap between the wall here and the internal foot, which is right here. And uh, what that'll cause It'll either fill up with the laminar serum and be kind of solid, or these lamina will stretch. And I will show you a picture, or I'll show you a hoof where the lamina has stretched. So, just a minute. Okay. <clears throat> now, this is a foot where the lamina has stretched um, in the toe <clears throat> and all the way around over to here okay now if you look in you'll see that the lamina is very short on the very back part of the quarter going into the heel here but then as you look here you will see that it's wider here now what happened is um, just like I'm telling you you can't allow your hoof wall to grow and jam up. Look at the line from here to here, straight across, right? Okay. Look at the difference in the two. Right there. Here. Look at the difference. Okay, see how the lateral cartilage is free here? Wasn't free with this foot here. The wall had grown up and added. Look at the heel buttress, the length of the heel buttress on those two feet. And how high the wall had jammed up here on this horse. Now, what that did was it lifted this internal foot up here. And then the drag on the toe here, it caused the internal foot, 
caused the internal foot to be lifted up and pulled up like this in the rear. Now, uh, my dog stole the foot to this, this hoof here. So that there was this wedge in the toe. Remember how I showed you over here. Look at the way the wall fits the foot right here. Growing down from the coronary bend. That's not what happened here. Okay, the internal foot was sitting clear back here. And what's interesting is this is the point of the frog. Okay, it was it, not that the frog and the foot had been stretched forward, but that the foot had been pulled back. And then, you know, the toe wall pulled this forward. And this is what you call a laminar wedge because these are lamina leaves that have stretched and been added to. They shouldn't be any bigger than that right there. See, your lamina leaves right here, you got lamina leaves on the inner foot right here and they're connected like this well it's a lot more complicated than this but basically like this like right here is your hoof wall right here is your inner foot and they each got this lamina which is called lamina leaves and they interconnect like this and then they got little dovetails in between thousands of them in between each one that keep them connected I mean there's hardly no pulling that apart and so um, this foot here has a tight connection in the lamina leaves together. But if this foot had flared out like this, then it very well could look just like that. Even in the side, even in the side of the foot there, it could look just like that. Um, this horse, as I said, had it clear over to here. See, she had a laminar wedge that went around her foot right there. And guess what? You couldn't even see it. She had a tight white line around the whole foot. But this was hidden in that foot. And what we're finding out, um, so on this foot, some, some horses, they may, they may, okay, have a stretched toe going forward this way which has created a laminar wedge in the toe that looks like that and a lot of times horses with laminitis will get this laminar wedge too okay other horses what you have is when this wall grows up it's going to push because this is attached to the inner foot right here it's going to push this whole foot up like that and back and it's going to pull the toe back and then this could develop just like it did on this horse here. Um, one thing we're finding uh, through the mapping by bringing the toes back to the breakover. Now this is what you do on a foot that uh, had say stretched forward in the toe. We're not right now I'm not talking about a, 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 a hoof that has where the walls have jammed up here. Okay but if it had stretched forward in the toe what we're finding is that if a horse has a laminar wedge like this and the toe has been being pulled forward and pulled forward now I want you to look at something here I want you to look at this little piece of sole right here that's buckled up you can see it see how it's curved around like that okay well a couple days before this horse was put down she had very her toes were really sticking out here um, I had cut the toe off as you can see there and brought it back now just in that amount of time and and this is what my hoof group is finding out too that when a horse has a laminar wedge at all like this once you bring the break over back on that foot um, the wall will come back very quickly within several days it's been kind of amazing people that this is going on now as you can see you can see when the wall stretches forward like this or or well, this actually the foot came back on this one, but irregardless, uh, the sole growing from the foot, the foot was back here, and so the the sole will be very thin right in here, and so when the toe was rockered and the breakover brought back, the toe wall shrank back, and uh, it pushed the sole back. You can see that right there see where it pushed the sole back now I'm asking you to look at this little piece of sole right here that's how thin the sole was 
on that foot in the toe see there so just in that couple of days after I took that toe off this wall shrank back because see these like they're hard right now but um, they're a lot more moist and softer uh, when the horse is alive and stuff so when you take the breakover back a lot of times that toe will just shrink back okay so again we don't want wall jamming up on a horse like this and guess what folks this is very 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 sharp and this is your um, what I call what you call the coronary band groove that's on the hoof capsule now here's the thing okay it's it's thicker down here and your coronary band lies in there and so when this all grows up it just smashes that coronary band and what's that do that restricts blood flow besides lifting the back of the internal foot now this horse had very deep collateral grooves you'd think she might have had uh, deep sole I do not think that the depth of collateral grooves necessarily tells you the thickness of the sole uh, because what we're seeing is very deep collateral grooves on horses see that that sole is not that thick it's only that thick okay and here's another thing on this foot <clears throat> as the wall came up and jammed the foot and lifted the back of the foot up the bar also grew up like this see there and this horse had two sets of bars she also had uh, extra sole growing under this sole because what happens is this wall will finally push that foot up so far that it will separate it from the internal the internal foot from the internal sole right here and uh, so she had an extra set of bars even growing on this this side of the foot over here now imagine that now see here where it's down like that I cut that off this was clear up here like that just like this side here um, but I cut that off there so I want you to see what was sticking up into the bottom of that horse's foot from a bar how long you think it'd take to get that bar out of the foot you know first of all you to cut this out and found hey there's another bar under there that's a whole other bar growing from that foot just because the foot has been lifted so high that it finally separated from the interior of its actual hoof capsule and started growing another sole and another bar underneath see how deep that was in the foot look at that ouch so this is why in the mapping and uh, corrective hoof trimming that I'm researching and doing we map these feet to find out where the wall really are where the coffin bone is and we want to get rid of any of this kind of stuff like that any kind of laminar wedge flaring whatever whether it be in the toe or in the quarters the sides of the foot all right so I'm going to now, I think I've, I've spoken on this foot enough, I think I can now remove the hoof capsule. But I wanted you to see just part of it taken, I wanted you to see it connected to the internal foot. And uh, I can even move this right here. I can feel this cartilage right in here move. See, people are under the mistaken impression that this in here is coffin bone. It's not, your coffin bone ends right about here okay well we'll remove the hoof capsule and and get a look at that internal foot alrighty